Well, good afternoon and welcome to Litson RV where we're located only one mile north of the Winnebago, Itasca and Winnebago Touring Coach Division of Winnebago Industries right here in Forest City, Iowa. Welcome to this month's webcast where we're going to compare and contrast why you as a consumer should purchase and consider a gas coach or a diesel coach. It's one of the most common questions that we receive here at Litson RV. So again, welcome to all of you to this month's live uh, video webcast. A couple of housekeeping issues before we get started. One of the things that have made our webcast so value added to our guests is the ability for you to interact with us as we're going through today's webcast. If you log into the lower right hand corner of your screen and chat in your questions, we'll cover those live as we go through this interactive presentation on why you should consider gas versus why you should consider a diesel coach. Also keep in mind that any of our Winnebago factory trained RV sales consultants can perform a live interactive presentation with you in the comfort of your home or office at any point in time from the comfort of your own home or office on any of our in-stock RVs. Also I want to welcome behind the scenes Josh Dam, he's our special events and marketing director as well as Casey Singlestad, our RV sales manager here at Litson RV. Uh, here within the studio that we have uh, within our dealership here at Litson RV, we actually have uh, three different coaches. We have two Class A's, a Ford-powered gasoline coach, which is a 2015 Itasca Sonova 35G. We also have a 2015 Winnebago Forza diesel pusher from Winnebago Industries. And then we also have a Class C Winnebago Trend. So we're going to compare and contrast the differences between a gas-powered coach and a diesel-powered coach all the way through the lineup from Class A to Class B and then also Class C. So Casey, take it away. All right, so we're just going to start out here on the Trend. Uh, so this would be the Winnebago Trend. Of course, the Itasca equivalent is the Viva. Uh, one of the new options that's available for the 2015 model year is the availability to order this coach in either a gas or a diesel engine. Um, so essentially, you have the same exact motorhome, same floor plans, um, same same features inside of inside of the coach, same operating components, simply just different engine. Uh, so your primary difference on the ProMaster is going to be uh, your gas your gas engine is a 3.6 liter versus a 3 liter if you have the diesel option. Uh, both of them are six cylinders. Both of them have six speed transmissions. Um, however, you've got a little bit of difference in terms of your power. So. Your gas-powered engine will have 280 horses with 258 pounds-feet of torque, whereas the diesel would be 174 horses with 295 uh, pounds-feet of torque. And Casey, a good question that actually just came in right off of the chute. Um, what is the difference in terms of where do you get power, from horsepower or from torque? Right, so um, your primary focus in terms of your power is always, you always want to pay the most attention to where your torque is at. Um, that's really where you're going to get all of your pulling power, um, particularly if you're towing, of course, but I mean, just in terms of your primary power source is more so on the torque side of things than necessarily the horsepower. And, and that's one of the reasons why our Mercedes-Benz lineup has been so successful. Again, that's a chassis that's designed for some of our commercial delivery services, such as FedEx and UPS. PS, and that's a real high torque motor that's in our Mercedes-Benz lineup. So 325 pounds feet of torque within that Mercedes-Benz lineup, which is one of the reasons why it's been such a successful uh, option for the RV industry. Right. Um, a few other differences just to highlight uh, specifically with the Dodge ProMaster option, um, generator differences. So of course with the gas powered engine you also have a gas powered generator. So that's a 28 power, 2800 watt Cummins Onan generator. Um, now if you go with the diesel option for the coach you will instead have a 2500 watt uh, LP powered generator. Um, otherwise just touching on um, some of your basic differences when you do go with diesel. Um, of course, in this type of a motorhome, uh, whether it be the Trender Viva, which is the Class C style, or the Travato being the Class B, where you can also get the diesel or the gas engine, um, you do have a difference, of course, in your fuel economy. So your diesel engine is going to get about 10% uh, improved fuel efficiency. Um, but of course, they're also that also comes with a price. Uh, so the diesel engine, um, so the diesel version of this coach is about $5,000 more than the gas. So that's kind of your basics in terms of class B, class C, where we have gas and diesel options available. Um, 
now we're going to cover a little bit more in terms of our Class A coaches. Um, so Class A gas, Class A diesel pusher. So as Ron mentioned, we've got two coaches here in our, here in our marketing bay. Um, both very similar in terms, of, um, in terms of length and floor plan features. Uh, so a lot of your differences then are some of the things that we're going to highlight in terms of why go gas or why go diesel. Um, of course, one of your biggest items is, of course, the difference in price point. Um, moving to a diesel coach over a gas coach, I mean, would, would be anywhere from a minimum of about 50000 all the way to over 100000 depending on which type of coach you're looking at and comparing to. Um, of course, with your diesel coaches, you have more of your high-end luxury uh, available with things like the Grand Tour Ellipse Ultra, even the Tour and Ellipse in general, where you do get some higher end finishes, um, you know, polished porcelain tile, some of your um, lighting type of fixtures and, and things throughout the coach that just have that richer feel to it, true hardwoods, those types of things. Um, of course, in all of them, you're going to have hardwood cabinets and drawers, things of that nature. Just some of your finishes are going to be a little bit more luxurious in some of the Class A uh, diesel coaches. Um, but again, so in terms of price point, quite a big difference there. Um, however, of course, diesel comes with quite a few benefits as well. Uh, beyond the actual price of the coach itself, um, you'll also notice, of course, there is a little bit of a difference in terms of the maintenance and operating costs. Um, overall, that's going to be a little bit more expensive in a diesel, uh, primarily just coming down to the cost of the parts, cost of the service. Um, of course, the diesel engine is a little bit more complex. So a lot of times that's going to require a diesel mechanic in terms of um, repair, warranty items, servicing, uh, whereas there's some of you out there that may be more mechanically inclined that would want to do that on your own in a gas-powered engine, uh, which is pretty common. And of course, finding service locations is also a nice convenience to the Class A gas coach. Uh, since they are Ford uh, or powered by Ford, uh, you can virtually find any local Ford dealership that will typically have the ability uh, to perform maintenance, uh, warranty work, service work type of items on a Class A gas motorhome. And Josh, while you're up front here uh, near the Winnebago Four, so let's cover a couple of questions that came in. Uh, one question was, what is the difference in ride between a diesel pusher such as the Forza or or a Ford-powered uh, Class A gas coach such as the Itasca Sonova. Right. So that's one of the really important differences between the two coaches. Um, so in terms of benefits to a diesel pusher, of course, there are several. However, that ride is really one of them. So just the overall experience within the diesel pusher, you're on air ride suspension. Um, even some of the coaches, when you get into you know, your Tour Ellipse, Grand Tour Ellipse Ultra, you've also got independent front suspension. Um, you've got a tag axle that would be available. So all of that uh, just makes your ride as you're going down the road that much smoother um, than, than what would be in a gas coach. Because of course the suspension in, um, the suspension in your gas powered is essentially on springs. Um, so you don't have that smooth ride that you get uh, that comes with air suspension. And Josh, while we're actually near this area over here, let's cover another question that just came in from one of our guests. And, and please keep those questions coming in because that's really what makes these webcasts interactive. And Josh, the first question that came in was, what is the expected fuel efficiency of the Winnebago Trend or the Itasca Viva in the gas version versus the diesel version? And Casey had touched on that earlier. What we're expecting uh, and what we're seeing with guests that actually have ProMaster powered uh, Winnebago Trends uh, is around 14 to 16 miles per gallon uh, highway. And with the diesel version, we're expecting about a 10% uplift in fuel efficiency. But again, that does uh, offset itself with the fact that the diesel version is more expensive. Uh, it does come with that LP generator. And that total package is about $5,000 higher than the gas-powered version. Um, and then also you have to equate in the cost of diesel fuel. It still is being uh, supported from the commercial end of, of the, uh, the fuel price consumption index. So again, diesel fuel being a little bit more expensive as well. So you have to take all of those factors into consideration. The gasoline powered versions in the ProMaster chassis have been extremely popular. Uh, real high horsepower motors um, that provide a lot of pep. Um, because the gross vehicle weight rating is slightly lower, um, really that's a little bit more important with respect to a smaller compact coach like this because it's a real high, high horsepower motor as opposed to really needing that low end torque uh, because uh, most people aren't towing behind the Winnebago Trend or the Itasca Viva. So uh, great questions. 
um, keep those coming in, please. And as we migrate back over, Casey, since you're near the FORSA, another question that came in is, is if you could touch on the braking system differences uh, between a Class A gas coach and a Class A diesel coach. And we'll stop there because there really are no differences within the B vans and the, and the C bodies. So we'll just touch on the Class A versions. Right, so in your Class A, um, of course, with with the air suspension, you also have air braking with that as well. Um, so that's a drum brake. It's spring applied in terms of your parking brake, air release. Um, and then, of course, your brakes themselves are also air. Um, in the uh, Class A gas, instead, you're looking at disc brakes. Um, and so... Um, Again, just one of those big differences in terms of air supply versus um, the the disc braking. Uh, also, of course, in your parking brake, that's a um, transmission mounted drum, and that would be a foot foot applied um, with a hand release. Well, one thing that's also unique about um, all of our Class A. Uh, coaches, whether they're gas or diesel, is both are actually going to utilize a grade braking system. So within um, the diesel pusher side, uh, that will be an exhaust brake that also utilizes the power of that Allison six-speed automatic transmission to assist in your braking. So that'll keep your brakes cooler. It'll also assist in the longevity of your braking system. Uh, within the uh, Ford uh, powertrains, we still utilize a grade braking system uh, when the vehicle is placed into tow haul mode. That utilizes the power of that five-speed torque shift transmission to assist in your, in your grade braking capabilities as you go down grade. Again, keeping your brakes cool and extending the life of your brakes. A couple of other questions that have come in and wonderful questions today. We really appreciate that and we hope you're getting value out of this. Uh, Casey, if you could just touch on the history and also uh, what it means to utilize diesel exhaust fluid in a diesel. Sure. So um, that was something that was released essentially um, on our Class A diesel coaches. You're looking um, most of them starting in 2011. Uh, there are some some unique coaches out there that happen to be 2011s that do not require DEF. However, the majority of them do. Um, so essentially, that was just a change in emission standards uh, that basically allows the the coach to burn cleaner is essentially the goal of that. So again, on your diesel pushers, you're looking at most coaches 2011 or newer. Um, the DEF tank itself is, um, I believe, about 13 gallons or so. It's designed so that for the average, the average RVer that travels about 10,000 miles a year would probably have to fill the DEF tank about three times. Um, so not a whole lot of um, not a whole lot of maintenance required with that. The filling of it, there's a lot of misconceptions out there that was that you had to fill your DEF every time you fill your fuel tank. That's most certainly is not the case. Um, in addition to that, you get some really nice indicator lights that are right up on the dash that'll tell you exactly where the level of that DEF tank is, so that, that way you know when you'll need to refill it. And, and also now, over the last three or four years, a lot of the major um, diesel dispensing stations at, at most of the light duty truck centers and also the over the road centers are now actually dispensing DEF at the pump, so you don't actually have to purchase it. Uh, in similar jugs like you use for coolant and things like that. So it's readily available. Um, some of the smaller stations that only offer uh, diesel and gas and, and don't have a lot of convenience capabilities, they may not be dispensing DEF at the pump, but in most of the over-the-road centers, it's very easily accessible. Uh, another question that just came in, um, a guest uh, chatted in that they have a 2011 Navion. Uh, with a diesel powertrain and the diesel generator and just wanted to find out if that diesel generator is still being made. It is, yep. Yep, yep. so you would have the 3200 watt um, Cummins own, own and diesel generator, which is still an option today um, that can be upgraded from the 3600 watt LP. So still available. Another loaded question that just came in, uh, wanting to know when Winnebago plans to utilize the Ford Transit uh, van. Um, and at this current point in time, uh, we're not aware of any plans. We've seen a lot of the future lineup. Um, no current plans to utilize the Ford Transit. One of the issues that we have with that Ford Transit currently is the fact that it does have a much lower gross vehicle weight rating uh, coming in pretty close to where the um, Winnebago View and Itasca Navion originally came in back in 2006 and 2007, just a hair over 10,000 pounds. So it doesn't give us a lot of the gross vehicle weight rating that the current Mercedes-Benz chassis has at 11,030 pounds. 
Uh, another great question that came in, any issues with class C diesels starting in cold weather conditions? And really great question. <laughs> and, and over the years, um, with technology in uh, diesel chassis, um, we really have not experienced any cold weather starting issues with our Class Cs. Uh, we've been utilizing just a tremendous number of Mercedes-Benz uh, Class C diesel powertrains since 2006. Obviously, we're, we're north of, of an area that is, that is a very cold weather area. Um, we don't have those issues. Even within our Class A diesel pushers, um, we, we do certainly maintain the starting battery life on those uh, diesel pushers, but very rarely do we actually ever have to um, include the engine heater to allow those to start. So with modern technology and the fact that they're not a large block over the road chassis, really no issues whatsoever with respect to cold weather starting conditions. Another loaded question, wanting to know whether or not Winnebago Industries has any plans to build a 29 to 31 foot uh, Class A diesel pusher. And same, same, same answer, answer as with the respect to the Ford Transit. Currently not aware of it. You know, we see a lot of the future uh, plans that Winnebago utilizes. Uh, no plans currently right now. The uh, smallest diesel pusher that again takes advantage of the quietness with the powertrain behind, by definition being a diesel pusher, uh, the air suspension, um, the air ride, the air braking, and the quietness within the diesel pusher. Again, the smallest coach that we have right now is this 34T Forza, which actually is a, is a really good length because it does allow for a walk around queen bed, and it's kind of underneath that 36-foot mark that most of the national parks and resorts have uh, to allow you to get in. Another great question that just came in, wanting to know whether or not you can install an engine block heater in a diesel engine. And with respect to like this Winnebago Forest, that this has an engine block heater that comes with it. Um, with respect to if the question is in regards to a class A, or excuse me, a class B or class C smaller diesel engine, those certainly can be added. So you can add an engine block heater to a smaller um, diesel such as the Mercedes or the Promaster. Um, we very rarely ever do them, um, but it is certainly possible. Great questions that have come in. So Are we go, all caught up? We're all caught up right <laughs> okay. now. So let's go ahead and keep rolling. And again, keep those questions coming in because that's really where we can add value is if you've got a question, we'll cover it. Yeah, that's great. Um, just to kind of touch a little bit more in terms of ride and overall driving experience, just a couple other factors um, that come into play with that. Um, just to talk a little bit in terms of tires, um, that's one thing that we talk a lot about in terms of our diesel pushers. All of your um, tires on a diesel pusher is going to be a 22 and a half inch Michelin tire. Um, of course, ranging a little bit in terms of the series, but all of them are 22 and a half inches. Um, in your Class A gas coaches, you will have some that are 19 and a half inch uh, Goodyear tires instead, uh, rather than the 22 and a half. Um, so tying into that is the difference in your gross vehicle weight ratings. Um, so when you have those smaller uh, 19 and a half inch tires, that also ties out to a lighter gross vehicle weight rating. Um, so in your class A coaches, that's going to range anywhere from, what, 18,000 to 26,000. Uh, versus in your diesel pushers, you're actually starting at 26,000 and then going all the way up to uh, 45,000 plus. And another good question that actually just came in with respect to air suspension and tire size, wanting to touch on whether or not there are any plans to um, expand the lineup that allow for storage underneath a 12-foot door. So, I mean, one of the advantages of going to a Class A diesel pusher that does have an air suspension mm -hmm. is you can actually drop the air in the chassis to pick up anywhere from about two to four inches in terms of height. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, Winnebago um, came out with the Forza and the Soleil was the fact that we can get it within a 12-foot door. And as Casey touched on earlier, when we went to uh, some of the EPA emission requirements with DEF to allow us to burn off the nitrous oxide for cleaner air, we did have to make room for those diesel exhaust fluid tanks. Also, if you think about the size of some of our coaches and some of the larger uh, slide-outs that we're currently putting in, those air conditioners are sized um, accordingly, just as though you would size an air conditioner for a home. Uh, Winnebago Industries sizes those air conditioners for the amount of square footage within your coach. And so um, with the expansion in square footage 
and with the fact that we needed to make room for the diesel exhaust fluid tanks, that's why Winnebago Industries went back to rooftop air conditioning, uh, similar to the rest of the RV industry. But again, the Winnebago Forza and the Itasca Soleil um, do have the um, lower length that'll allow for some more storage uh, capabilities. Couple that with the fact that it is uh, an air suspension, you can drop the air in the chassis and gain about two to four inches. So again, a great question. Yep, so other big item in terms of when you're driving the coach down the road um, is, of course, the difference in the engine location. Uh, so, of course, here at the front of the Forza is where you have the generator um, versus on um, versus where typically on a Class A gas coach, you'd have your engine up at the front. So what that means for you as you're driving down the road, since your diesel engine is located in the rear of your coach, you get a nice quiet ride as you're traveling. And, and while you're touching on that, uh, Casey, if Josh, if you could just focus in around the wheel well of that 22 and a half inch tire. Uh, one of the questions that a guest just chatted in is wanting to know why uh, the coach appears to be so low to the ground uh, with respect to where that 22 and a half inch tire is. Right, and so that's just in reference to like what Ron was mentioning before about when you drop the air of the coach. So each time when you drop, each time when you park a diesel, um, generally the first thing that you're going to do is then drop the air in that before you put your leveling jacks down, take your side rooms out. Um, so that's what actually takes the level of the coach and basically sits it down on top of the tire, uh, which is a little bit different from the Class A coach. Again, just that difference in suspension. Uh, being springs on the Class A gas versus the air uh, that we then drop that's on the diesel pusher. The other nice thing while you're focusing on the tires with a diesel um, is in terms of maneuverability, uh, in a diesel coach you're going to have anywhere from 55 to 60 degree turning radius. So um, really nice in terms of when you're getting around, whether that's parking at home or maneuvering into a campsite, you've got a really great turning radius uh, with your diesel pushers. And of course, that increased turning radius comes when you do have that independent front suspension in our Tour and Ellipse line, uh, as well as the Grand Tour and Ellipse Ultra. All right, so to kind of move on to some other... Um, areas. Uh, in terms of fuel consideration, you heard Ron talk about it a bit in terms of uh, that there really isn't much of a difference in terms of the fuel economy when you're looking at Class A diesel versus Class A gas. Um, so with either one, uh, realistically, you'd be looking at an average anywhere from about 7 to 10 miles to the gallon. Um, so really no difference there. There's a lot of, um, we get that question a lot as to whether or not a diesel engine would, would provide you with better fuel economy. Really not the case. Um, of course, with fuel, it's also a consideration with the fact that diesel normally does run slightly more expensive uh, than gas, um, just in terms of cost-wise. The other nice thing, of course, with the diesel is that you do have dual fuel fills, so you'd be able, to, you'd, you'd, you're able to fill the coach on either side, um, located right near the cab area. On a gas coach, the location of that fuel fill is going to vary a bit, um, but of course, only be available to you on one side. And then, of course, your tank capacity will vary a bit as well. Class A gas coaches being about 80 gallons, your diesel would have anywhere from 90 to 150, depending on the coach that you're on. Uh, some great questions that have just been chatted in. And again, just as a reminder, if you have a question, be sure to lower, uh, go to the lower right-hand corner of your screen and chat that question in, and we'll get those real-time here within our studio and cover those uh, on a real-time basis. Uh, a question that came in earlier was wanting to touch on the longevity in terms of life, uh, Casey, uh, between a gasoline-powered engine and a diesel engine. Right. So that's another one of the big benefits in terms of a diesel um, is the longevity of the engine. So a diesel engine is, is really designed to run for hundreds of thousands of miles. Um, and not that a gas coach won't. Uh, it's just that the diesel really has that longevity. That's why you see it in a lot of your um, transportation vehicles, deliveries. A lot of those are diesel powered for that exact reason. They're designed to handle miles and miles worth of traveling. Um, some, some nice longevity there. Obviously, you've got the 6.8 liter Triton V10 that comes in all of your gas um, Ford coaches. Um, and of course, then in your diesel, you're looking at either the 6.7 liter or the 8.9. Um, but again, just designed to, to run for 
hundreds of thousands of miles um, versus not quite the same in terms of your gas coach, which is also what helps with, um, with maintaining the value of your coach. So um, in terms of resale value, whenever it comes time for you to trade your coach in or sell it on your own, uh, your diesel engine um, or a coach that has a diesel engine will, will maintain that value a bit more. Um, you know, they're, they're very highly sought after in terms of the pre-owned market. So a nice way of kind of regaining your value there as well. And another great question that came in specifically with respect to the Winnebago Adventurer and Itasca Sun Cruiser 38Q. Uh, just wanting to touch on what is the estimated fuel range uh, on that coach. And with that being a 75 gallon fuel tank, we can expect usually around uh, just a hair under 600 miles uh, in terms of what expected fuel range is. Um, and that is one thing that, that um, we can touch on right now with respect to Class A coaches. The difference in fuel efficiency between a Class A diesel and a, or excuse me, a Class A diesel and a Class A gas coach, they're very, very similar. Um, most of our um, Ford powertrains, regardless of what other dealers are going to tell you, um, you can expect anywhere from around seven and a half to nine miles per gallon, which is very, very similar to the diesel pusher. So despite some of the other reasons of why you would go to a Class A diesel, fuel efficiency really shouldn't be high on your pecking list because they are very, very similar between the two coaches. Uh, but a very good question. So please um, keep those coming in. Another question that just came in is wanting to know if we can do air suspension on a Class A gas coach. And currently not factory installed from Winnebago Industries. Um, there are some aftermarket um, companies that do air assisted suspension. Uh, very few and far between. We don't see a lot of those on the road. It was, it was something that did come into play during the mid 90s and early 2000s, but we really don't see a lot of those anymore. Uh, another good question uh, that came in with respect to um, uh, expected hour life on a generator of diesel versus LP in terms of run life, not sure. necessarily longevity. What do you mean? So in terms of, uh, I believe what the, what the guest is really curious about is how long can I run my generator on a tank of LP compared oh. to a tank of diesel fuel. So uh, a diesel generator, and, and I'm guessing that's probably with respect to a Class C or a Class B, uh, because all of our Class A's with respect to the diesel pushers will run on diesel generators that run off the top three quarters of the diesel fuel tank. Um, with respect to our B vans and our C bodies, um, whether they're diesel or propane with respect to the generators, the diesel generators will consume fuel at about three tenths of a gallon per hour at half load. Uh, the propane at about six tenths of a gallon per hour at half load. Um, believe it or not, the run life with respect to a tank of fuel, because again, remember we only pipe into the top three quarters of the fuel tank, is about the same as a propane tank. Obviously it's easier to get diesel fuel, but most of the over the road truck centers now are RV friendly that have the availability of actually dispensing um, diesel fuel, propane, taking water on and dumping all in one location when they're RV friendly. So very, very user friendly when you're out on the road. Uh, another good question that came in, if we could touch on the typical estimated miles per gallon of a Winnebago Via or an Itasca Rayo. Sure. So um, the Via and Rayo essentially is just going to... Um, obviously, that's a Class A version of the View Navion. So the View Navion would generally get about 16 to 18, with the Via and Rayo being the A version of that. It's just slightly less, um, more so looking probably in that 14 to 17 type of range in terms of an average. So, of course, the biggest thing when it comes to fuel economy uh, is going to be your driving conditions that will make the biggest determination as to exactly where you land in terms of that average. And another good question that came in, um, Casey, if you could just touch on as we go up the lineup the size of diesel generators in Class A diesel pushers. Sure. So. Um, what we're looking at today, this is the um, Forza 34T. So this is the uh, shortest length of diesel pusher that's available. And so this comes with the 6,000 watt um, diesel generator. So again, that's come and zone in. Uh, and basically you're just gonna go all up from there uh, all the way to, is it 10,000 that's, mm -hmm. yep. that's in the tour and ellipse. So starting with six in the Forza um, and then up to 10,000 in your higher line diesel pushers. Another good question that came in, which I'll probably give a vague answer to, and I'll preface that, 
um, wanting to know with the high fuel consumption that the RV industry utilizes, why we're not embracing hybrid technology. And if you go back to some Winnebago's press releases, they did have a modified hybrid uh, concept vehicle. Uh, it was probably five to eight years ago. One of the problems with uh, hybrid technology like that is the fact that we have such a high gross vehicle weight rating that it would create such a surge in very rapid battery consumption. And until we can get much larger uh, battery packs to be able to, to power an RV, it'll be very difficult to do. The other downside to that is that those battery packs typically take up a lot of weight. And so as you go up with a higher gross vehicle weight rating, one of the issues we're gonna run into is just how much weight those battery packs do actually take out. Uh, some other great questions that have come in. If you could just touch on, again, depreciation uh, between the two, gas versus diesel. Sure. So um, basically in terms of a rule of thumb that the RV industry generally goes by is that each year can range anywhere from basically six to $10,000 is what's considered average. Um, now, with your diesel pushers, they're going to hold their value a little bit better than what a gas-powered engine would be, which primarily ties back to that longevity of the engine that we talked about, and then also just the difference of the pre-owned market. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of folks out there looking for diesel-powered engines for the benefits that we've been discussing, the power, the longevity, um, you know, that air ride, air suspension, quiet ride down the road. Um, so that that's why a lot of times you see your diesel pushers holding their value a little bit more um, than what a gas-powered coach would. And there's been some discussion actually on the chat board right now that we'll touch on because there were some questions that come in, came in and then also just some uh, additional discussion around solar technology. And we do actually quite a few solar installations here at our dealership. Our, our guest base tends to be um, very knowledgeable, very technologically embracing guests. Um, so we do a lot of solar installs, and Winnebago has also embraced that, especially as we've gone up the lineup with more residential refrigerator-style uh, packages, such as what the Winnebago Forza has. And um, with respect to solar, Winnebago offers a 100-watt solar panel option on some of their coaches. I think we'll see more of that in the future as well. We've done uh, higher... Uh, power driving solar when we link those in parallel here at our dealership. So a lot of that's going to be dependent upon how you as the guest are utilizing the RV and how much space we actually have up on the roof. But typically the, the average uh, solar installation is around 100 watts, which will maintain that charge towards your RV batteries. Uh, another question that came in uh, asking me to reiterate the run lives of generators and specifically within the Class C lineup of the diesel versus propane, uh, the diesel generator consumes at three-tenths of a gallon per hour at half load, whereas the propane consumes at six-tenths of a gallon per hour at half load. Um, the diesel generator is quite a, quite a bit more expensive. Most of our guests, I would probably estimate 95 to 99 percent, opt for the propane gen set because they're typically not putting on enough hours on their generator to offset the cost of the incremental diesel generator, which runs around $4,300. And so with most of um, our coaches that come back in on trade, we see most of those hour gen meters coming in at around 100 to 200 hours. And there's really not a big impact on resale. So at some point you have to ask yourself, you know, do I really want to spend 23 to $46 an hour to run my generator to go to a diesel gen set? If you are doing a lot of dry camping or hotel camping, it can be beneficial because uh, it can be easier to find uh, diesel fuel. But most of our guests, again, 95 to 90 99% are running with propane gen sets. So we'll keep going, and I'll continue to interject questions. Okay, so um, I think we touched on it briefly earlier, but we're just going to take a quicker look at storage and talk a little bit more about that. Um, so we've got a few of the storage compartments open on each of our coaches today to give you a little bit of an idea of that difference. Um, so one of the big things that you're going to notice is the difference of the opening size. Um, and just generally speaking, uh, one of the nice benefits of a diesel pusher is that difference in, in storage. Um, now, the coach that we're looking at today uh, is on the Freightliner chassis. Winnebago also has the Freightliner Maxim chassis, where those chassis rails that you see there would actually be dropped, uh, which increases your storage even more. So in a diesel pusher... Um, in terms of cubic feet of exterior storage, it's going to range anywhere from 153 
uh, feet all the way up to 229 cubic feet of storage. Um, so just a massive amount. Josh will have you swivel around here to take a look then at the difference in the Sonova. So again, still a nice size, size storage compartment, just not quite the same height in terms of the opening. Um, does still have the storage uh, that goes up above the chassis rail so that you get some of that pass through. However, in your Class A gas coaches, uh, your storage is gonna range anywhere from 92 up to 168 uh, cubic feet. So just a lot more storage uh, capacity available on those diesel pushers. Um, in addition to that, I think we've talked about it a bit, but we'll just touch a little bit in terms of power um, difference. Of course, as, as we discuss the, um, the diesel, the diesel powered coaches are of course a diesel pusher. So you've got the engine that's in the rear of your, your rear of the coach. Um, the Forza that we're looking at today has 340 horses. Um, and essentially the lineup just goes up from there, ranging all the way from the 340 that we're looking at today up to 450 horses um, on our Tour and Ellipse line, as well as the Grand Tour and Ellipse Ultra. And again, as we touched on before, torque is your biggest thing. So in this, you're looking at 700 pounds-feet of torque is what comes with the Forza. And that goes all the way up to 1,250 pounds-feet pounds, pounds feet of torque um, in our Tour and Ellipse line. Now, when you compare that to our Class A gas coaches, all of these, again, have that 6.8 liter Triton V10. And so that has 362 horses with 457 pounds feet of torque. Um, so as you can tell, there is quite a bit of difference in terms of power. So a lot of times people are, are talking about whether or not you're traveling, um, you know, in the mountain area, which is not at all to say that a gas powered engine does not perform well in the Rockies. Uh, you know, if you are doing some of that West Coast travel, um, you know, we've got lots of RV owners that are traveling in uh, mountainous areas with a Class A gas. However, some people do like that additional power that comes with the diesel pusher. Now, of course, with the Class A gas, if that is one of your concerns, there are aftermarket accessories available um, so that you can increase that power that's available. And some wonderful questions that have actually just come in, wanting to reiterate um, our expected fuel efficiency with a Winnebago Trend or an Itasca Viva. And most of our guests are averaging about 14 to 16 miles per gallon highway on the ProMaster powered Winnebago Trend uh, and Itasca Viva. Some interior um, questions that have come in. A guest uh, wanted to know if they could swap out a king bed mattress for a Tempur-Pedic. Sure. Absolutely, we have people swap out mattresses all the time. Also wanting to know in some of our Class A gas coaches if tankless water heaters are available. Um, they are. Uh, it's completely just dependent on the model that you're looking at, uh, which is both the case in our gas coaches as well as our diesel coaches where that's an option. Uh, and then another question that came in on a Class A gas coach if we can install an electric cooktop. Um, many of you know that as induction cooking. And we can certainly approach Winnebago Industries about customizing that. Winnebago does a really nice job of, of customizing coaches for their guests uh, in terms of uh, going to induction cooktops. Um, it's certainly possible. Uh, I know that what will be an issue is going to what's considered an all-electric coach uh, because in all of our Class A gas coaches, we're utilizing a traditional propane-fired um, furnace for a primary heat source. Another wonderful question that just came in, wanting to know if all of our gas coaches uh, run on regular fuel or on premium fuel. And you can utilize um, regular uh, unleaded gasoline in a Class A gas coach or a Class C gas coach. You can utilize uh, premium fuel, either of those are fine. You can even run um, ethanol, which we utilize here in the Midwest. The only thing that you cannot run in any Powered coach is E85, which is the high content uh, ethanol that you find here within the Midwest. So again, you can run any type of fuel within the uh, Class A gas coaches, uh, or for that matter, our Class C uh, gas. Um, another item that we'll touch on a bit is uh, differences in towing capacity. Uh, so your Class A gas coaches are all capable of towing 5,000 pounds. 
in your Class A diesels. Uh, the 34T is a bit of an exception. Uh, this has a 5,000 pound towing capacity. However, all of our other diesel pushers, um, which of course are a little bit um, of a heavier, heavier coach, uh, can tow anywhere from 10,000 to 15,000. Um, so for some of you, if you do have heavier items, trailers uh, that you may be towing, a diesel might be the way for you to be able to achieve that towing capacity that you need in order to accomplish that. Another good question that came in on Class A gas coaches, uh, the guest understands that in most of these setups that the highest amount of factory installed inverter is at a thousand watt, whereas on many of our uh, Class A diesel coaches, we actually go to a 2000 watt or in some cases a 2800 watt pure sine wave inverter. And we can do a 2000 watt inverter Class A gas coach, it would need to be customized. Um, either at the factory or here at our dealership. So we can go to a 2,000 watt inverter. Uh, another good question that just came in, and wonderful questions today, and we really appreciate that because it makes it more interactive for us, and hopefully you as the guests get more value out of it. Wanting to know, um, and actually we just covered this during training today with our service technicians, um, maintenance intervals um, on a class C diesel. So let's touch on the Mercedes. Sure, so the Mercedes is obviously our most popular uh, that we have here. Um, according to your owner's manual, that's actually going to recommend um, doing a two year or 12,000 mile um, maintenance warrant or um, maintenance schedule. Now, we generally recommend, um, for those, especially those of you that don't travel year round, uh, it's still good to change that oil at least once a year. Um, but that's for uh, the Mercedes. Uh, Diesel is, what's that, one year, 15,000 miles? Yep. So any of your Cummins, whether you're in the 6.7 or the 8.9 liter, um, that same thing going to be an an on an annual basis or every 15,000 miles. Um, because of the diesel, that's what allows you to drive more miles um, than with the gas. And I can't remember what the gas was. 7,500? For oil change life on a Class A gas? Yeah. Correct. 7,500 miles. Yep. Another great question that just came in, wanting to know, and again, we covered this during professional development this morning with our um, RV service staff, is how easy is it to change out an AGM uh, absorbed glass map battery? And one of the things about utilizing AGM batteries is they are maintenance free. So they don't utilize a wet cell like a traditional RV battery. And one of the reasons why Winnebago utilizes and invests, because they are more expensive, an AGM battery, is because it is much easier for the guest, and in some of our coaches, it actually lowers the center of gravity for enhanced performance in the handling of the RV. With an AGM glass mat battery, uh, they actually come to backed with a five-year warranty on the AGM battery. So the expectation is that you should never need to swap them out. Um, if you do need to swap them out, it is a little bit more difficult because they are heavier batteries and they're typically mounted in more conspicuous locations for a reason, uh, because they are maintenance free and because the expectation is that you won't have to swap them out for around five years. So great question that came in on AGM batteries. Um, touching on uh, V10 chassis. Um, wanting to know uh, tow ratings between uh, 350 and 450s and just wanting to touch on what you can tow between the two. Sure, so in any of our gas uh, powered coaches, regardless as to whether or not you have the 350 or the 450, all of them will be capable of towing 5,000 pounds. And another specific question to the Class A gas coach lineup on a 37F uh, which is a Winnebago Adventurer or the Itasca by Winnebago Sun Cruiser, uh, wanting to know if the black tank all runs into one location, which it does. It runs into one black tank uh, with one outlet. And then, Casey, if you could just touch on uh, Class C oil change intervals again on a Mercedes-Benz Class C diesel. Right, so um, the Mercedes, again, according to your owner's manual, would recommend a two-year or 12,000 mile um, maintenance interval for your oil changes. Now, what we talked about is the fact that a lot of our reviewers aren't necessarily consistent travelers for a full year. Um, so a lot of times each year as you bring your coach out of storage, it's good to start off with fresh oil and um, is a good time to change your oil at least once a year at that point. 
Um, and then I don't know if I finished in terms of, of our gas coaches, whether you're in a class C gas or a class A gas, uh, the recommended interval there is every six month or 7,500 miles. So again, just the difference in gas versus diesel, um, you are able to go on a little bit of a longer interval with the diesels versus the gas. Uh, and then another question that came in with respect to dumping, uh, same gas with respect to the 37F and 38Q, uh, wanting to know if that wet area, which I'm assuming you're referring to the utility center uh, where the exterior shower is, your city water input, and um, that, that utility center, wanting to know if that is actually heated and enclosed. In which coach is enclosed? Uh, 37F or 38Q. Um, it is. So our, all the Adventure Sun Cruiser line all has heated basements. Um, so your storage areas as well as, of course, that utility bay also has um, heat plenums that run to it to keep that warm. As long as you're keeping uh, the coach at a livable warm temperature, um, some of that heat will also be distributed into your basement. Uh, another wonderful question that came in, wanting to know if we could touch on the differences in downgrade uh, performance of a um, diesel or a gas coach? Just in terms of grade braking, yep. engine braking. So um, it's basically just that the style of it is a little bit different. So as Ron touched on earlier, um, in your Class A gas coach, you have the tow haul mode, which allows you to have that grade braking um, basically to kind of help help with wear and tear on your brakes. Um, now the difference with that in a D Class A diesel coach is that that's going to be an engine brake. Um, okay. Um, what was I talking about? Grade braking. Sorry. Um, so again, on your diesel coach, instead you have the engine brake. Uh, and so with that, you actually have a switch that's right on your dash that allows you to choose whether that's in high or low. Um, really great feature in terms of saving on your brakes. It does take a little bit to get used to in a diesel pusher. Uh, because that really does slow you down quite a bit, almost to a complete stop, really. Um, so that's a really nice feature to have um, in your diesel coach, as well as, of course, the grade braking system that's in the Class A just functions a little bit differently. A couple of other wonderful questions that have come in. Uh, wanting to know, um, again, how generators uh, receive their fuel. And if you have a diesel generator, a good rule of thumb is the fact that it'll run off of approximately the top three quarters of the main diesel fuel tank. And with respect to a propane generator, which is the majority of our Class C diesels, um, that will run directly off of the propane tank and it does not actually pipe in at a certain watermark with respect to where you're limited on propane. Uh, another great question that came in with respect to uh, wanting to know uh, if there are ch child safety latches to hook up car seats to. And really that's dependent upon the floor plan. Um, a, a car seat can actually be utilized with the lap belt. Um, we also have certain floor plans that actually include a factory installed lower latch system uh, for the top of, of a child seat. Just as a rule of thumb, it's generally our floor plans that include some form of dinette uh, that typically has that child seat tether on, uh, typically it would be the forward facing um, section of that dinette that would have that tether that's down towards the floor. And Casey, you knew the question was coming. So wanting to know if we could comment on uh, the new Mercedes-Benz four-cylinder versus what has been the steadfast six-cylinder. Right, so um, just as we touched on before with the ProMaster chassis, that's a new feature that's available in our Sprinter coaches. Um, so go, again, both are still going to be diesel. Um, your primary difference is actually going to be the transmission speed. So um, the standard 3.6 or, or 3 liter, excuse me, uh, Mercedes engine is paired with the five speed tip shift uh, transmission. Now with the new seven, the new seven cylinder, of course, that's a seven speed transmission that comes with that. So you've got a lot smoother in terms of shifting, um, also expected in terms of better fuel economy. Um, but of course your, your big difference there is gonna be in power. Um, so I think we've had a few guests throughout the year who'd have chosen to go with that seven speed instead. Um, however, the vast majority of what we're doing is still in the standard five speed uh, transmission. Um, uh, biggest item there, of course, if you are going to be towing, that's when you really, the seven speed transmission would really not be something that you'd want to consider uh, because of that difference in power. And I have to cheat to be able to tell you what it is. So the horsepower on the seven speed is 161 um, with 266 in torque. And of course, as we talked about before with the three liter, um, that's 188 horsepower with 325 pounds feet of torque. 
Yeah, so it's, it's actually almost 30% less powerful in terms of torque of the four cylinder versus the six cylinder. That, that four cylinder really kind of brings us back to where we had the inline five cylinders in the 2006 and 2007 model year. Um, a couple of great questions with respect to um, the Travato and also the Trend and the Viva, wanting to know when the new diesel will be available. And it, it's available for order now. We actually uh, have one that is expected to be finished here at the end of March uh, with respect to a Travato in terms of the diesel. Uh, the, the question, though, was actually asked when we'll be getting the new Travato. And I'm guessing that what you're referring to there is the new 59K floor plan that we showcased on our website. Um, which actually is, is about the same time frame, if, yep. if I recall correctly, late March, early April. Okay. And, and that's going to be a wonderfully designed uh, coach that uh, is available now. We've actually already had a couple of retail orders placed for one side unseen just based on the, the still pictures and, and video that we have on our website. But uh, that new 59K will be coming in about six weeks or so. And then wanting to know... Um, with respect to um, HWH levelers, if you could just touch on that. Uh, with the, I'm sorry, within the, the Class C lineup. Oh, uh, sure. So um, most of your Class C coaches do not come with an available leveling jack option from the factory. Um, but the great thing is, is that HWH is located here in Iowa. It's right in Moscow, um, which is about uh, three and a half, four hours from our dealership. And so we can facilitate that process in getting those jacks installed for you at a uh, slight discount versus if you did that directly. Um, so you can have, they have several different styles available. Of course, the most popular being the automatic straight acting leveling jacks, um, which cost $3,900 to add to your coach. Um, now, the biggest reason that those are not an option available from Winnebago is just because it is a little bit of a pricier option. And with the Class C coaches, they can generally be leveled fairly easily um, simply with like a Lynx leveling uh, type of system, which of course is kind of a Lego uh, block kind of uh, leveling. Of course, a lot of people also just simply use blocks. Um, of course, the nice benefit with the leveling jacks, in addition to the fact that it levels your coach with the touch of the button, is, of course, that it also stabilizes it as well. So a nice benefit there, but it does, of course, come at a cost. And in case, if you could just touch on, are they available for the Trend or the Viva? Um, I don't know that we've had anybody install those yet. We, we have, we've not yet had one installed. We've inquired, and they actually have one in design for it. So it'll be available very soon if it's not out already. But again, just contact us, and we can coordinate that for a Trend or a Viva, and in some cases, a Travato. We've, we've done very, very few leveler installations on B-Vans, um, and that probably is going to be a, it's going to require a lot more research on behalf of HWH in terms of a B-Van. In general, um, adding levelers like that uh, generally adds anywhere from about 165 to about 185 pounds. So that's one thing that you also want to be sensitive to is that it will diminish your cargo carrying capacity. And I believe, to my knowledge, the last time that we had inquired on one of our B vans, which I believe was an era at the time, um, there was not a leveling jack system available that would um, that the space would be available to add those. And then Casey, if you could just touch on again the oil change interval for a view or a Navion. Sure. So view Navion you're looking at every two years or 12,000 miles, again, with a recommendation being to do that on an annual basis if you're not a year-round traveler where your coach sits for a few months in storage. Uh, and then a question that had come in earlier, and we've yet to touch it because we've actually been outside the coaches, wanting to know if we could just touch on the cockpit of a Class A diesel pusher. Perfect. That's so, exactly what I had left to cover. So um, we'll just look at a little bit of the differences in terms of... Um, the cab area in a gas versus a diesel coach. There are a few differences to highlight. Um, of course, one of the first things that you'll notice as you go into the cab area is the fact that there's not a doghouse of any kind. Um, so Josh, if you want to focus between the two chairs here. Um, so essentially, your the flooring runs all the way through the cab area. So it's flush, um, no type of step up or doghouse, as we like to call it, um, which essentially is what covers the engine in our Class A gas coaches. Um, so that's one of your bigger items. Of course, some of your um, some of your gauges and and features that are here in the cab area are slightly different and located a little bit differently. Of course, with the touch, you have the touchpad style of selector for um, for your gears as well as your transmission uh, in the diesel. Whereas on your Class A gas, that would be a standard gear shifter. Uh, in addition to that, in your um, 
Class B diesel, you do have both a tilt as well as a telescoping wheel. Um, so that's a nice feature to that. A lot of our uh, coaches in your journey meridian on up will also have some nice steering wheel controls in addition to that, um, which of course your standard Class A gas coach also has some of that in terms of your cruise controls uh, that's handled right on your steering wheel. In addition to that, Josh, if you wanna focus in on the pedals, it's another difference in your uh, Class A diesel coach. So this is a treadle style um, of brake as well as as well as accelerator. Um, in some of your in some of your diesel coaches, you will have the option for adjustable pedals. Uh, once you're in your Tour and Ellipse and Grand Tour and Ellipse Ultra lines, um, whereas you have your standard automotive pedals uh, in the Class A diesel or Class A gas coach, excuse me. Um, I think those are kind of the primary differences, unless you can think of any others, Ron. No, that, that was really well done. A couple of other questions that have come in. Uh, one of our guests wanted to know what the engine life mileage is of a VIEW or a Navion V6 diesel. And really what I can comment on there is we actively participate in the VIEW Navion forum, and, and we have a lot of, of very uh, solid guests that participate in that, in, in that forum, and I believe uh, one of the uh, things that they chat about on the forum is is the record for the number of mileage uh, that people have on on their sprinter based coach and I've seen some with 150 to 160 thousand miles. Um, really, probably the the most analytical evidence that we have is if you go on to uh, eBay or Craigslist and look at some of the uh, FedEx or UPS trucks that are out there. Some of those will be on there with a quarter of a million miles. Uh, typically, RVers don't put on that many miles, but it certainly is a steadfast powertrain that we've been using uh, coming up on now for a decade. Uh, another guest uh, chatted in wanting to know if we could actually walk them through our new RV dealership and. We're not going to uh, bore the hundreds of people that are on the on the webcast right now with that, but just keep in mind that we can offer a live interactive presentation um, at any point in time with any of our factory trained consultants on an in-stock RV or walk you through our facility. But we do really have a, a very um, guest-friendly RV dealership here that, that people have really come to enjoy. So we'll leave it at that because we're really not trying to push the, the dealership right now and really just trying to focus on the difference between uh, gas and diesel. So uh, thank you for your comments. And uh, again, if you want to do that, we can set that up with any of our factory trained consultants. All right. So um, just in terms of before we head over to the gas coach, Josh, if you just want to get kind of a basic view of the floor plan, one of the things um, that we're highlighting today is the fact that, um, and of course, keeping in mind that the slide room is in that you're currently looking at, um, but that the floor plans that we have today are actually fairly similar. Um, of course, this being the diesel and the sites or the Sonova, excuse me, being the gas version. Um, so both of them, both of them feature this nice large um, U-shaped dinette that also has a what they call um, an in table uh, that basically can function uh, it gets it gets stowed away in both floor plans so in this particular one it's right under here um, and so you can make a nice large size dining room table out of that it can be an end table it has storage in that as well um, so both floor plans feature that and then of course um, both of them also have the nice uh, eye level uh, television which is great so it's not up over the cab um, a lot of people really like the feature that it is nice and down low. This does pull away from the wall and swivel. And then in addition to that, of course, you do see the fireplace, which is a really great uh, residential feel. Um, you get some really nice heat off of that as well. And the fireplace, of course, it's, um, that's powered by your electricity. So just uses that same 100 and 110 volt power when you're plugged in or have your generator running uh, to run the fireplace. And so all of those are kind of similar features that we'll head over and see in our 35G as well. So same thing as the um, 34T4 so that we were just in, our slide room is in right now. Uh, but again, you can see that this has um, the nice inch Nice large U-shaped dinette. It also has that lower level TV. Um, this particular 35G that we're in does have the storage cabinets. However, you can also get um, an available fireplace uh, added to that location as well. 
Uh, but Josh, if you just want to head up into the cab, we'll kind of touch on some of the differences there that we discussed earlier. So again, first focusing on that doghouse. Um, that's really your primary difference here in the cab area. So essentially that's covering uh, your engine here in a gas uh, RV. And then of course, as we talked about, some of your controls are just in some different locations is the biggest thing. Your steering wheel, um, as I mentioned, it does feature the cruise control settings that does tilt, however, does not telescope like it does in a diesel pusher. And then of course you have your standard automotive style pedals versus the treadle pedals um, that were located in the diesel pusher. I didn't highlight that when we were over in the Forza, but we did talk a bit about the engine braking versus the grade braking. And so your engine brake will, you basically have a, have a switch just like you have um, for your lights and your front powered shade um, that would be located in the 34T. Here in the Class A gas coach, it's your tow haul mode that gives you your grade braking and that's located right on the end of your gear shifter. You can see it's simply a little push button that allows you to enable that feature. Uh, but otherwise everything else is pretty similar in terms of your rear and side camera controls, um, temperature controls, leveling jack controls, uh, all of those are going to be the same. And Casey, a good question that came in wanting to know if the TVs that are installed are smart TVs. In, in these particular coaches that we're in today, they are not. Um, and it really just depends on the floor plan in right. terms of which TV is being utilized. Um, some floor plans, depending on the size of the TV uh, and which TV Winnebago is utilizing, they are considered smart TVs. Uh, and then Casey, if you want to touch on the expected tire life um, on a Vue or a Navient, just in terms of tread life. So sure. um, with respect to RV tires, um, most of the um, mileage intervals that RVers will actually place on their coaches, you're generally not going to run out the life of an RV tire unless you're putting on a lot of miles. Most of them, depending on what model they are, will range anywhere from 60 to 80,000 miles in terms of the tire life. Generally what ends up happening is if the tires become UV checked, you may actually experience the time interval of, of, a, of a tire change as opposed to a mileage change. So a good question that came in. Yeah, typically, I know in terms of Michelin, uh, they generally look at like seven to seven years is really when in terms of time frame, it's really run its course in terms of the life of the tire. Um, 10 years is really pushing it um, for the age of a tire. You really want to try to switch that out before then. Um, some of your other tires, um, Continentals that are on the View Navion, um, you really want to start considering that more so in that five to seven year type of range. Because as Ron said, it's really the the time frame of the tire that, that tends to age before the actual tread life does. So there's also been a lot of questions that have come in and I kind of wanted to, to wrap up the, the, the chats with respect to um, the concept of using um, high content uh, biodiesel. And um, we actually have some documentation from Mercedes-Benz that touches on this specifically uh, within the Midwest because a lot of the Midwest dispensing stations are utilizing B20. So if you actually look at the documentation from Mercedes-Benz, um, they do recommend utilizing ultra-low sulfur diesel, which is pretty much all that you can find now uh, ever since 2008. Um, but they do recommend ultra-low sulfur diesel uh, with a bio content of, of five parts per million or less. And that's what a majority of the stations are throughout the United States. In the Midwest, we do have some stations that are B20, and you can utilize B20 in your Mercedes investment. Um, but what Mercedes does recommend is that you utilize it on a limited basis um, where you need to, but also make certain that you monitor your engine oil level as well as your fuel filter, because that's one of the things that B20 can do is clog up your fuel filter. So again, we have that documentation from Mercedes-Benz, and I just kind of wanted to lay that out once because that's, that's really what Mercedes-Benz has put to documentation with respect to the argument of B5 versus B20. But some really great questions with respect to that. All right, well, I think in terms of um, my hit list of items, I think we've covered most everything in terms of your primary differences between Class A and um, Class A gas and Class A diesel. 
Um, so again, just another reminder that if you'd like to do this style of walkthrough on any of our in-stock inventory, we're more than happy to do that with you. Um, with any one of our uh, factory trained sales consultants, we're happy to do that. Um, but otherwise, are there any other questions? No, but one thing I did want to clarify, and I appreciate one of the guests calling me out on this, um, it's not actually five parts per million, it's actually 5%, so I apologize for that. But again, it is uh, 5% with, respect, with respect to the um, biodiesel um, discussions. back and forth. <laughs> but again, as we wrap up, again, a, a wonderful webcast today because uh, this has probably been one of our most successful webcasts with respect to um, guests that have chatted in questions. And that's really what makes these so engaging. And, and we appreciate some of the feedback that has come through that we should do these on a weekly basis. But again, if there is a specific vehicle that you want to do a live interactive presentation on, we can do that at any point in time on any of our in-stock RVs uh, from the comfort of your own home or office. It works in a similar format, although we actually have you mic'd in with one of our sales consultants so that we can actually cover things real time. But again, we want to thank all of you for joining us today on our webcast in which we compared and contrasted uh, the diesel and uh, gas um, benefits of, of utilizing either one. So again, a wonderful webcast today. We appreciate all the people that have tuned in for it. And again, um, check out our website at litsandrv.com. And again, chat in any of your questions directly on our chat tool online. And again, if you want to set up a live interactive presentation, just reach out to any of your sales consultants that you're working with here at Litsandrv. RV.